Welcome back to Mental Math. This statement is one of the most famous and misunderstood in all of mathematics. The sum of all positive integers appears to obviously diverge to infinity. However, through a set of techniques known as regularization, we can assign a finite and deeply meaningful value to this series, negative one twelfth. This seems impossible. How can an infinite sum of positive numbers equal a negative fraction? Today, we will walk through the formal manipulations that lead to this result and then uncover the rigorous mathematics involving the Riemann zeta function that gives it meaning. Our journey begins with a foundational divergence series known as Grandi's series, which we will label S sub 1. S sub 1 is the sum of alternating ones and negative ones. The partial sums oscillate between 1 and 0, so it never settles on a value. To assign it a value, we must use a non-standard approach. A critical warning. The algebraic rules for convergent series, like rearranging terms, do not automatically apply to divergent ones. What follows are formal manipulations. The goal is to find a consistent value, which we will later justify. Let's begin the formal calculation for S sub 1. We will try to express S sub 1 in terms of itself. The key idea is to subtract S sub 1 from the number 1. This gives us 1 minus S sub 1 equals 1 minus the entire series enclosed in parentheses. Now, we will formally distribute the negative sign through the parentheses. After distributing, the right-hand side becomes 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1, and so on. We must recognize that this resulting series is identical to our original definition of S sub 1. This leads to the simple algebraic equation, 1 minus S sub 1 equals S sub 1. To solve for S sub 1, we first add S sub 1 to both sides of the equation. This isolates the constant on the left giving us 1 equals s sub 1 plus s sub 1. Combining the terms on the right yields 1 equals 2 times s sub 1. Finally, we divide both sides by 2 to find the value of s sub 1. Thus, the value assigned to Grandi's series is 1 half. This is our first crucial result. Next, we will analyze a second divergent series which we will call S sub 2. S sub 2 is the sum of integers with alternating signs. This also diverges, but we can use our result for S sub 1 to assign it a value. The method this time involves a clever subtraction. S sub 1 minus S sub 2. Let's write out the expression for S sub 1 minus S sub 2, showing both series. We will perform a formal term by term subtraction. The first term is 1 minus 1. The second is negative 1 minus negative 2. The third is 1 minus 3, and so on. Let's evaluate each of these simple arithmetic operations. The result is 0 plus 1 minus 2 plus 3. An interesting pattern emerges. If we ignore the initial 0, the resulting series is exactly our original series, S sub 2. This gives us the equation S sub 1 minus S sub 2 equals S sub 2. From our previous work, we know that the assigned value of S sub 1 is 1 half. Substituting this value gives us 1 half minus S sub 2 equals S sub 2. Now we solve for S sub 2. Let's add S sub 2 to both sides. This leads to 1 half equals S sub 2 plus S sub 2. Combining the terms gives us 1 half equals 2 times S sub 2. To isolate S sub 2, we divide both sides by 2. This yields our second key result. The value assigned to S sub 2 is 1 fourth. We are now ready for the final step. It is now time to tackle the original problem, the sum of all positive integers, which we will call S. Our series S is 1 plus 2 plus 3, and so on. The final formal manipulation involves subtracting S sub 2 from S. Let's write out the term by term subtraction. 
S minus S sub 2. Observe carefully what happens with the signs during this subtraction. 1 minus 1 is 0. 2 minus negative 2 is 4. 3 minus 3 is 0. 4 minus negative 4 is 8. The odd numbered terms cancel out. Let's simplify this resulting series. We are left with the sum of 4 plus 8 plus 12, and so on, the multiples of 4. Notice that every term on the right-hand side is a multiple of 4. This allows us to factor out a 4. Factoring out 4 leaves us with 4 times the quantity, 1 plus 2 plus 3, and so on. The series in the parentheses is, once again, our original series S. The equation collapses to S minus S sub 2 equals 4S. We can now substitute the value we found for S sub 2, which was 1 fourth. This gives us S minus 1 fourth equals 4S. To solve for S, we must gather the S terms. Let's subtract S from both sides. This leaves negative 1 fourth on the left and 4S minus S on the right. Simplifying the right side, we get negative 1 fourth equals 3S. Our final step is to divide by 3. And there it is. The formal manipulation leads to the result that s, the sum of all positive integers, is assigned the value of negative 1 twelfth. These formal steps feel like cheating. So, what is the rigorous mathematical justification? It comes from a famous object in number theory called the Riemann zeta function. The Riemann zeta function, denoted zeta of s, is defined by this infinite series, the sum of 1 over n to the power of s. Crucially, this series definition is only valid when the real part of the complex numbers is greater than 1. Outside of this domain, the series diverges. So, what would happen if we naively plugged ss equals negative 1 into this formula? Plugging ins equals negative 1 gives 1 over n to the negative 1, which is simply n. This is our sum, but it's outside the domain of convergence. The solution is a powerful technique called analytic continuation. It allows us to create a new formula for the zeta function that agrees with the series for s greater than 1, but also gives valid results for other values, like negative 1. Let's visualize the analytically continued Riemann zeta function for real inputs. The function is smooth and well-defined almost everywhere. The original series definition works on the right for s greater than 1. Analytic continuation provides the values on the left. The red dashed line shows the pole at s equals 1, where the function shoots to infinity. Now, let's look at the value of this extended function at s equals negative 1. The graph shows that the value of zeta at negative 1 is precisely negative 1 twelfth. Our formal manipulation gave the correct answer provided by the rigorous theory. So, what have we learned? It is fundamentally incorrect to say the sum equals negative one twelfth in the traditional sense. The series diverges. A standard equality sign is misleading. The correct statement is that the value of the analytically continued Riemann zeta function at negative one is negative one twelfth. This value, found through a process called regularization, is not just a mathematical curiosity. It appears in physics, in areas like string theory, and the study of the Casimir effect. Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed this deep dive into one of mathematics' most fascinating paradoxes, hit that like button and subscribe to keep exploring these beautiful ideas together.